I believe that we're live. Hi, welcome to uh, the Cindy Sorley experiment. Uh, we've got Cindy Sorley and Jason Argenberg with us. It was Jason's idea to do this tonight. Uh, he wanted to talk to Cindy about uh, about this last big haul that she got, that she had to uh, rent a U-Haul to pick it all up. Uh, <laughs> go cross, cross country. So I'm just going to kind of monitor the, uh, the chat room, and I'm going to turn this over to uh, Jason, and uh, he can... He can start in with he can start uh, in with Cindy, Cindy. Sarley experiment. Uh, we've got Oops, Cindy Sarley. Turn, turn this down. Jason Argenberg with us. It was Jason's idea to do this. Too. Sorry about that. I like to just put, really first kind of just thank you and Cindy both for taking uh, time out of your busy schedules to actually just kind of accommodate me on my my curiosity more than anything. I just think this uh, story is awesome, and I love when uh, fellow resellers can score a big haul like this. So my curiosity gets the best of me, and that's kind of why I wanted to kind of get this get together, uh, kind of together here online, just kind of talk about it. So, uh, Cindy, how did all this come about for you? I, I was, was it an eBay transaction that you had bought and something from a from a fellow eBayer, and then it kind of escalated? How did, all that, how did it all go at first? How did that work out? Yeah, so what happened is I buy a lot of cross-stitch needlework um, patterns and stuff on eBay to resell if the titles are not great or if there's lots of cross-stitch. And I had contacted this lady that had listed a number of cross-stitch patterns, but she had them listed as kits. And I wrote her and I said, hey, I just want you to write this, change this title to patterns because you've got kits and I don't want you to get a negative or an item not as described, but these are only patterns. And she writes me back and she goes, good call. I know nothing about this. I'm getting rid of all my mother-in-law stuff that passed away a year ago. We just need it out of the house. She said, I've got a lot of other stuff. Will you consider taking a look at it? And I said, yeah, let me take a look at your listings and see if you need to change anything else. She writes me back. She goes, no, 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 no. Not, I don't care about the listings. Will you look at my stuff? Will you buy it? And um, so I, I looked at her items, and I said, none of it really appeals to me um, at what you've got because these are things that don't sell for a lot of money for me. So I was helping her out. And then she wrote me back and she said, I'm getting ready to put on a great big stash of stuff, a whole bunch of stuff, and I'm just going to call it a large stash. I know nothing about it. So she put it on and she says, please make me an offer. So she had it at $1,750 and she said, I know nothing about this stuff. Please make me an offer. All offers are considered. Well, five minutes after she put it up, I made a really low ball offer of $400. She accepted it. Wow. She was so excited, so um, I wrote her and said, uh, I don't expect you to pay the shipping on this because it was free shipping. And I said, I don't expect you to pay the shipping on this. And she says, do you want to look at anything else I have? I've got tons of stuff. Can I send you pictures? So she started sending me pictures, and I started going, wow, she's, got, she's just inundated with stuff. So we made a deal um, that we, and this went on over two or three days where she started sending me, texting me pictures. She started sending me all kinds of pictures and everything. So from the eBay deal where I ended up buying a couple of kits from her in this great big stash, I ended up doing a whole bunch of other stuff with her that she just wanted to get rid of everything. She wanted it out of the house. They had inherited the house and had a house that had sold. And so they were making two house payments. Wow. And um, they needed out of the other house. So we made a deal, and it was getting to the point where I was calling freight companies, I had David Rayer helping me, trying to figure out how we were going to get everything, and the pile started getting bigger and bigger and bigger as she was taking photos, and I went, there's no way I can, you know, and I was calling freight companies, they wanted three, four, five thousand dollars to ship this stuff, and she had it all in crates, you know, the plastic bins and everything, and she had it pretty much sorted. I made a deal with her, the deal was really a good deal for both of us, but I had to consider what it was also going to cost for freight. Well, it worked out to where I was able to get a Hertz Pinsky truck, fly into St. Louis. So I, I got a one-way ticket for me and my son, my 27-year-old son, and we flew into St. Louis and rented a Hertz Pinsky truck and then drove two and a half hours to Rolla, Missouri, and then another 20 or 30 miles south of there. Now. Remember, we fly in at 4 or 5 in the afternoon, and we are driving through these dark woods with possums and skunks and everything in this big, 
Didn't you yeah. get in the mud one night or something I saw? Yeah. 23-foot <laughs> truck driving down trying to find this place, and right before we pulled in, someone goes, have you told anybody where you're going, like where this is or who these people are just in case something happens? <laughs> so I texted my husband and I told him where we were going and, and everything. We got in. They had it all ready. They had a whole bunch of people there to help us load it up. Um, we did the transaction and we were out of there like in an hour and headed out in the truck wow. that night. Wow. So when you got there, I mean, you had seen some samples, but you really hadn't seen everything when you first got there then, huh? Yeah, I knew that what I had seen in pictures was worth what I was offering. Yeah. And so I told her, if I feel it's worth more, I'll be, I'll be happy to give you more money. And she said, and if you feel when you get here it's not worth the money, I'm happy to give you the money back. Um, the deal was $1,500. Wow. Okay. And since then, um, we'll talk about how it has sold and where I sold it and how it's happened. Since then, I've given her another $500. And wow. I will probably give her more along the road as it sells. But um, so I ended up paying two thousand for it, and then with the airline tickets, the hotel, and the truck, that was like another fifteen hundred dollars with gas and everything. Cindy, Cindy, I want to ask you a question real quick. Was that your deal to uh, give her more money, or is it just what you're doing because uh, it was it's so valuable? It was so valuable, and she didn't know what she was getting. And I told her, I said, you know, if I find out this stuff is worth a lot more, because it was late at night, it was 9 30, 10 o'clock at night, we were loading bins in, we were loading big, big bags of fabric. And she threw in, she gave my son 12 <laughs> bins of albums. She goes, I want no money for these. And his wife is like, what? You know? <laughs> but. She said, now, if you find a really good one, I want some money back teasing him. But she was a really nice lady, and I told her. I, I didn't even tell her. I said, you know, if I do make some more money, I will give it to you. But And she goes, no, I don't expect it. But, you know, I don't, I'm don't. i a type of person that I didn't feel like. I, felt, I didn't want to feel guilty like I robbed her. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And I felt, you know, I got such a great deal on this and, and did okay with it that I just wanted, you know, I didn't want to rob her and have yeah. guilt doing it. I think that's a good thing. Did, how long How long was she, did her mother collect that stuff for? Do you have any idea how the, the time length that the collection was? It had been years and years and years and it was amazing how many duplicate patterns and duplicate kits she had. So we find this a lot in the cross stitch industry that a lot of people will buy, buy, buy and they don't realize what they've got if they don't have a really good system and they'll have duplicates. And um, and she had a lot of duplicates, or she would go to Hobby Lobby or Michaels, and it'd be on clearance, so she'd buy two or three of them, you know, two or three of the same pattern. So, because some of those are some of those actually are collectible, aren't they? Is, is it retired patterns? Is that how that works with cross stitch? Yeah, some of them, if they go out of print, they can go for big money. And this is a company that you guys all want to look for. This is a company that published 202 leaflets. They call them books, but they're just leaflets inside. Prairie Schooler has announced after 33 years that they are closing. If you see these, grab any that you can. Last night I sold one. I don't have it now because it's already shipped today, but I sold it on my Facebook group for $75, and that wow. was the uh, that was the going price on eBay. This one right here sells for about 40, and wow. I sold three of these last night on my Facebook group. And I got these in the hall. So you can understand why, um, you know, some of the older ones go for quite a bit of money. And they're just simple, simple patterns. Right here in my hand is about $200 or more, you know, with four leaflets. Four little leaflets that you can pick up at a thrift store or a garage sale for a dime or a quarter. Cindy, Debbie wants to know if all the costs, the flight, the truck rental, the mileage, the tax, are they all deductible? Yes, every single thing is deductible. Um, if I give my, I, 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 here's what is interesting about it: the the flight because um, I paid for my flight because it was business. Um, my son's flight, the um, because I hired him. I'll be giving him a 10.99 at the end of the year. I paid him because he missed work, so I'll give him a 10.99 at the end of the year, and with that, I'll be able to write that off his airline fare and his flight and his food. You know, it didn't cost much to eat at Waffle House, but um, <laughs> but
but yeah, so that's all a write-off because it's all part of the business. And you made that, I mean, you did that quick, too. Wasn't it? How long was that trip? It was, what, a day and a half, two days? <laughs> it was fast. <laughs> so we, we left on, um, thir on Wednesday afternoon and, or no, Thursday, I'm sorry, Thursday. I think it was Thursday. We got down there Thursday night. We were home Saturday afternoon at 2 p.m., and it was about, I think it was between 15 and 1,700 miles. We wow. spent one night in... Um, Western Missouri, and then one night in Rollins, Wyoming. And the reason why we stayed in Rollins, which is only five or six hours from home, is because I told my son, you're not driving any further. You've been up now for forever. But um, but it was it was a pretty amazing trip. My son drove the whole way, and Jason loves this part of the story. My son drove the whole way. Now, we're in a, we're in a <laughs> six, 20, 20 th three, three foot truck. And when we got home, my husband was dying. He's going, look at all those price stickers. The whole cab was covered in price stickers. And the reason why is because while my son was driving, I was listing all the stuff. And I wasn't just listing on eBay. I also have a buy and sell group. We have, I have nine of them. The one I'm the most active in, or actually the only one I'm really active in, is the cross-stitch group where we have about 1,900 members that buy and sell cross-stitch kits, patterns, and everything. And the only fees you pay are your PayPal fees. And so you make an album, you list up your items for sale, you put the price, and then people will say, me please, me please, me please, me please. Well, during all of this, I was listing this, but I also have customers that I know what they're looking for. I know their personality. I know, you know, I know that Nikki loves animals and she loves um, houses so animal Nikki pile you know and I had so this girl gave me a whole bunch of priority boxes because she said she was not selling anymore she was done so I made up some priority boxes and I marked Nikki I marked Kathy I marked Susan I make Mark Joan so I marked these boxes then I put them all in there and I would, every time we'd stop I'd go grab a whole bunch and bring it into the cab and sort through and put them in the boxes and then on the Facebook group, I made an album called The Friday Sale, The Friday Clearance Sale. That stuff was going so fast, and the girl that works for me, I called her and I said, can you start taking stuff off the Facebook group? And she goes, sure. She worked her tail end off. She goes, that as fast as you listed it, it was selling. Now, I was also selling the items that were a lot more expensive. I was selling those on, on eBay. And I had some patterns that I knew were 125, 75, 85, 50. And I listed about 10 of those on eBay on Friday, and seven of them sold by the time we arrived home on Saturday afternoon. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that makes you feel good, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, I love the story. <laughs> and the coolest thing about it, the coolest thing about it is from everything that I sold to these ladies in private messages and on the Facebook group, everything was covered by the time we pulled into the driveway on Saturday. All the fees, all the expenses, the whole cost, and everything. Wow. So, that is amazing. So, so Deb asked another question. She wanted to know if it's all Prairie school, Schooler or, um, I, I mean, is there stuff you should pass over or should you just grab Prairie Schooler if you can? No, if, if you're out and you see cross-stitch patterns, anything that's a license like uh, Disney, um, uh, Care Bears, uh, Rainbow Bright, those are licensing. Pick those up. Um, but, and if you see companies that are samplers, samplers always sell. There's so many companies that are out of print. And what I'll do is I'll make up a list this week of the companies that are out of print that are selling. I'll give you some names. Birds of a Feather, um, they do really, really well. Um, Blackbird Designs, they are not out of business, but they're going out, they're, they're retiring designs. Uh, Prairie Moon is out of business, and unfortunately, the Primitive Needle, the designer, was killed three and a half years ago in a flash flood as she was driving to work. And her family was going to keep the business going, but they didn't, and now her designs have become... I mean, one of her patterns sold last night in the Facebook group for $100. Wow. 
Right, but Debbie wants to know about you. Taught you brought up the Prairie Schooler. Is it should you grab anything Prairie Schooler, or should you? Are there certain ones that you know certain types that you should pass up for Prairie Schooler? No, you never pass up a Prairie Schooler if you can get it for under a dollar each. Okay. Um, if you can, um, I will post the Prairie Schooler inventory list. It's a link, and I will post that. Um, it'll tell you which ones are out of print, which ones are not out of print. And I say that if you can get any Prairie Schoolers for under a dollar, buy them. And then there will be a list of ones that might be more. Like if you go to a garage sale and someone goes, oh, I want $2 for that or $5 for that, I'll tell you which ones to buy because you can get $100 for some of them. Okay. Wow. And um, Linda is asking if Prairie Schooler is sold at Hobby Lobby only. No, no, no. Prairie Schooler sold at all. It is sold. I don't even know that Prairie Schooler was sold in Hobby Lobby. Prairie schoolers sold everywhere. Where you're going to find them are thrift stores, uh, garage sales, church bazaars. That's where you're going to find them. They've been around since 1982. They were one of the first designers I bought from when I first started my business. And Pam and Nancy have been very good friends of mine. In fact, they wanted us to stay when we came through Saint, uh, Kansas City with the hall. They wanted me to. Uh, Nancy said, "Come and stay with us." Well, we went through <laughs> we went through Kansas City at two in the morning, so or something like that, some ridiculous time. So we weren't going to make it to their house um, that night, and so we ended up staying closer to um, uh, uh, east of there. But the thing is, is any Prairie Schooler just because they are announcing their retirement and their patterns have always maintained their value. So when did they actually stop producing, do you know? Their their last book was number 2002. I mean, sorry, 202, and that was a month and a half ago. I talked to Nancy today. She is likely not going to put out any more designs, and they are looking at closing the doors in early 2016. So you can still find some of it in... In, in stores. Re in retail. And, yeah, in retail. So if you can find them... My thought is, is if you can find them, buy them. You're not going to find them in current stores like Michael's, Hobby Lobby, and all that. Those are going to be current designs that are current. You want to look for the the long, the long out of print ones, which are some of their early numbers. Um, wow, this is one that just went out of print. I heard it was going out of print, so I went and bought a hundred of them, and I'm not selling them right now. Because I'm gonna hold off on on to, I'm gonna hold on to them, and I paid three dollars a piece for them wholesale or three fifty, and already they're at twenty one ninety nine on eBay, and I have a hundred of them. Wow. So here's here's the million dollar question. Yeah, that's awesome. About cross, cross stitch that that you get probably more than anything, <laughs> and that is, do you even sell ones open and started? Yes, I do. I have. Um, bought kits that are started that have a few stitches done on them and or even lines done on them or even partially done and here's the note here's the reason why now don't you laugh Jason because you're gonna love this the reason why is some of them are from retreats and you could only get them at the retreat they're partially started people really want them number two is if they're partially started people will finish them and then they will claim that they did the whole thing. So they'll go, oh, look what I did when it was already <laughs> when it was already finished. Now, I will remember the first time I got a negative on eBay. It was because a lady bought a finished cross-stitch of mine, and it did not arrive in time for her to enter it into the Kansas State Fair. And the negative said it did not arrive in time to enter into fair. And I was like, what? So I contacted wow. her, and she goes, yeah, I was going to enter it in the fair. Well, it upset me, so I just let the Kansas State Fair know. You know, just let them know. Didn't they hold, <laughs> hold up that cranberry uh, uh, pattern again? Uh-oh, we may have lost Cindy. No. No? Right okay. Good. Oh, hold that up again so, so that... Uh, uh, Somebody was asking, Christine, no? Somebody was asking about it. So it's a prairie schooler at the bottom. We can't see the bottom. Cranberry Christmas. Yeah, and it just went out of print. Just went out of print, but the ones you want to look for are their Santas. Their, their Santas have been out of print for a while. I'm telling you, prairie schooler is a gold mine right now. 
Um, if you guys could see around me, my poor husband's room is completely covered in, in books. Um, I, I told my husband, I said, you know, this is something we need to invest in. This is something they're going out of business or announcing it. I'm going to be one of the ones that has them at the end. You know, I'm holding on to them. Yeah. I said, if we can hold on to them for six to eight months, you're going to have people say, I didn't get this, I didn't get this, I need this, I need this. They're gone now. And, and that was another question that Tina asked: Was uh, any any idea how long till the current ones become more rare and valuable? Yeah, as soon as they as soon as they close, um, they'll be closing in early 2016. I don't know the exact date. I talked to Nancy today. They are not sure. They're trying to lay everything out. They don't know if they will sell and get licensing off anything. They are not selling the designs to anyone, but. You know, someone like Jan Lynn or someone might make some kits out of some of their designs at some point, but you're not going to get the leaflets. They might do kits, but you're not going to get the leaflets. And I'm telling you, cross-stitch people are, they want to have the leaflet. They want to have the whole collection. I had a lady yesterday buy almost every one of my patterns that I had, and she didn't care what they cost. And I went off eBay prices and sold them to her at eBay prices yesterday. And I mailed her box today. Wow. So they're not printing them anymore as of now at all? They're just selling through what they have then, Cindy? Is that what they're doing? Um, what, what's that, Jason? I'm sorry. So they're not printing any more of those at all now? No. They're just selling through what they have, right? They're selling through what they have, and she told me today they're getting real low on a lot of numbers. And I said, well, the ones you're getting low on, can I buy them? She goes, sure. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so would, would it be a good investment to buy the ones that are they're so called no liquidating kind of so to speak, or would you stay away from those altogether? No, you know, if if I go into a store and I see them, I'm not going to buy them because I can still get them wholesale. I can buy them from the pro schooler. But if I go into a cross stitch store and they have some of the out of print and they want five, six, seven, the most they'll be is nine dollars. Their newer ones are nine dollars. If they, you know, if there's an out of print one and it's seven or eight dollars and it's out of print, yeah, I'm gonna pay seven or eight dollars for it and then I'm gonna hold it. I wish I had the one that I sold today. It's called When Witches Go Writing, and I'll tell you, I hate Halloween, but I've made a ton of money on Halloween because if you sold only what you liked, you won't be in business. That's Same right. Same thing with clothing. You know, that is the ugliest thing I've ever seen, but it could be your best seller. That's right. And so um, I, I do want to say I, I do sell on eBay. I do sell on Amazon. Amazon patterns don't do well. The reason why they don't do well, people don't want to pay $3.99 to have this mailed to them because that's what Amazon's minimum is for Merchant Fulfilled. Yeah. Problem, problem with it going to FBA, people don't think to go to Amazon to buy this kind of stuff. No, it just hasn't hit that market yet. I don't know if it ever will. Um, so, as we all know, sales kind of dropped last May, May a year, whatever the Google slapdown was, it was May. Um, my sales really dropped drastically. I tried to do everything I could to pick it up. And I finally thought, you know, I, I've got to find something where I can make some money and get rid of this inventory that's overtaken my whole house. And, um, so what I did is I went and made a buy and sell cross stitch group on Facebook and on that Facebook group what we do is we require that you make albums so what you would do is you would have Prairie Schooler, you would name it Prairie Schooler then you would load it with all the items, all the pictures and then you would put the price on it and then people say me please, me please, me please you ask them to send you their I say send me your zip code and your um, email address and the reason why I say I say I say sorry I say location a lot of people say zip code I say location because forty percent of my business in August was international on the Facebook group wow. and let me tell you if you sell on a Facebook group ship international because I'm telling you shipping international I don't know what it is with people not wanting to ship international, but there's a lot of cross stitchers worldwide. Excuse me, one sec. I'm gonna while you're, while you're drinking, I'm gonna bring up uh, Raymond from uh, from Cost from Cindy's Online Selling. 
Uh, we had the hardest time getting him to ship international, and now he's doing international shipping. And he made a comment today that 75% of his stuff is going overseas right now. So if you're not shipping international, you're leaving money on the table. And that is something that we preach in all the groups day after day after day after day. Exactly. And I, I can't tell you, um, today we did 12 packages from eBay and nine of them were international. Wow. And a lot of that is Canada. Now remember, Canada's dollars right now is about a dollar thirty-two against the American dollar. And so they're in the, they're paying more, even paying more. So they want that ability to, you know, they're they're gonna think before they buy. So give them that opportunity to sell to them. Right. You know? uh, Sean just told me, I think yesterday, that uh, the Canadian dollar is seventy cents on the American dollar. Yeah. 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 That's crazy. So um, something also to keep in mind is when you're in the Facebook groups and you want to start one, we just started a brand new one this last week called Buy and Sell Postcards. Uh, Brian Goodman asked us to do that because he sells a lot of postcards and on eBay you have to have tracking to become a, you know, for a top rated seller. Well, yeah. postcards can be put in an envelope for 49 cents and you don't have to have that uh, tracking. So on the Facebook group, you know, you can say this is my cost of shipping, 50 cents or whatever. You've also got to remember you're going to have per transaction, all you're going to have is that 30 cent PayPal transaction fee and then whatever your percentage is on how much money you take in, 2.9 percent or whatever it is, you know, whatever your transaction fee is. I kind of work that in a little bit sometimes into my uh, uh, what do you call it? postage fees? So, like, if someone has a fifty dollar order and it's only going to be, you know, um, oh, say it's going to be five, say it's going to be a flat rate padded envelope, and they know that a flat rate padded envelope is five seventy five, I'll charge the five seventy five, but I'm only paying, you know, five oh five, yeah, or whatever, and so I can make up a little bit of that fee. But my prices, I keep them a little bit lower. And people say, well, I've got cross-stitch books or cross-stitch kits that aren't worth anything. They're only worth 3 or $4. Well, I'll tell you what, prime example. Last weekend, a lady came in and bought all my two, three, four-dollar books, and her order was almost two grand. Wow. And it was three boxes to ship to her, but they add up. And if you're going to buy in the, if you're going to sell in the uh, Facebook groups, do not add shipping to the price because they'll buy more and then you'll say, I'll weigh it, I'll combine it, and I'll sh I'll tell you how much it's going to be for shipping. And that's what you're doing when you're doing, when you're saying you're doing invoices, that's what you're doing. You're, you're putting your words together, figuring out shipping, and then sending them a final invoice. Yes, yes, and I, I detail it all. How, how, does the, uh, how does that transaction look like then? When they say, me, please... And at that point, are you sending them a private message and then communicating via private message or just tallying up what they want and then sending them the invoice? Yeah, so what we do is we have uh, notebooks and um, we go in. The girl that works for me, what she does is she'll write down certain people. We have a number. I mean, we probably have, we have 1,900 members. And since January, I think we just went to, I think we're at 900 transactions since January um, um, from the Facebook group. And so what she does is she writes their name. Some people have their own book. They buy so much, <laughs> you know. And yeah. what they do is we write down their name and then what they want, then I go in and invoice it. Um, and then once it's sold and they paid for it, we delete the thread and the item off of the group. Okay. Can you uh, send the cross-stitch cross books if you sell a bunch of them? Can you media mail those? I do not media mail them. Because they're supposed to be, um, you know, that's for manuals and stuff. But I have received a number of, of uh, lots that I've purchased on eBay. I have received those. You cannot mail any magazines at all um, because they have advertising in them. You cannot send those media mail. Now, I do have about 400 hardback books that don't sell for a lot of money. Those I will sell in the Facebook group. Uh, Facebook group and those will be able to go media mail because those are library type hardback books. They have to be so so many pages and I don't know exactly how many pages it is. These are so thin that these wouldn't qualify for media. Okay, and then a couple other questions 
Uh, Deb asked who carries Prairie Schooler. I think you kind of touched on that, but uh, it, you're not saying to go in and buy them at retail for resale right now, right? You want to find them in the uh, thrift stores yeah. and the rummage sales. Okay, I'll tell you what to do, people. If As long as you're not in Utah, okay, as long as you're not in Utah, put an ad in your local um, Craigslist. Put a lad ad in your local classifieds if it's a free classifieds and say, hey, I buy old cross stitch patterns or I buy old crochet patterns or old needlework patterns and kits. Um, I did that last week and I ended up going to someone's house and paying $150 like I needed more stuff. <laughs> but by that evening, my $150 was already paid for six times over. I mean... My, go my thing is, and this is one thing I really wanted to touch on, Jason and David. When I bought the huge hoard four, three years ago, three and a half years ago, down in St. George, Utah, it cost me $8,000, and I had to take a loan on my line of credit. So I have a backup for a line of credit. Well, I didn't want to pay those fees on that line of credit, so we had the truck parked in the front of our house the night we got home, I stayed out there all night pulling $8,000 worth of stuff to get listed on eBay right away the next few days. And I had my $4,000 loan paid off in 30 days. Wow. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's what it is. If I buy something, I don't let it sit. It's yeah. I have to pay my investment back yeah. really quickly. Then the rest is gravy. The rest yeah. is my profit. But it has to, and I take everything into consideration, fees, um, you know, everything that cost me to get that hoard, everything. And so for the Prairie Schooler, going back to the Prairie Schooler, if you go into a retail store right now, those patterns are going to be 8 or $9. And, yeah, you can buy them, but they're still current. And But if you go into an old, old cross-stitch store, or you place an ad, and I wouldn't place the ad as saying, hey, I'm looking for prairie schoolers. I would say, I'm looking for cross-stitch. Oh, look at the cat behind him. <laughs> That's awesome. So, so uh, Flatware Mark wants to know, uh, wait a minute, let me find it again. Should I buy uh, used cross-stitch patterns if they look like some threads are missing? You mean cross-stitch kits? Uh, he, well, he said patterns, but I would imagine kits because a pattern wouldn't have them, right? Yeah, if they're if they're good patterns, you know, if they're like eight and a half by eleven pictures, and it might, and if they're kits, kits come with pat with the fabric and the floss. One way to tell is if it doesn't have the threads, is if the piece of fabric is not with it. That means that you've got a kit that's been used, and there's only a little bit of thread left with it. You know, the leftover thread. And if the pattern's a high demand pattern, you can get some good money for patterns that were only in kits. And you'll hear a lot of people in my Facebook group saying, I'm seeking this pattern from this kit. And you'll be amazed how many people will say, hey, I did that kit. I've got that pattern. And they'll sell it for $10 or $15. And that's just the pattern, not even anything to go with it. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So... There's, there's a lot of money to be made in needlework, a lot of money. And um, it, it's, it's, I mean, it's paid my bills for 30 years, you know. I mean, I've been in the business for 33 years, in and out of it, with brick and mortars and everything. And I'm seeing a really big resurgence in younger people now starting to do it. A lot of my customers are in their 20s are in their early 30s. It's not an old lady type craft. And I've got a number of male customers also. Wow. Can you explain the difference between uh, kits and patterns? Yes. A, a pattern is strictly a pattern that will come either in a book form or they'll come in um, a, a package with the pa oh, How ironic is this? I happen to have one right in front of me. It'll come with in a plastic bag, nothing with it. It'll just be the pattern, okay? But a kit, I don't know why I have these things here, but I do. Um, a kit. There is no place you can go in your house and not find or see cross stitch. 
<laughs> Please do not share that with Jim. He said today, I just want a place to eat dinner. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you would call a kit. Now, this is not cross stitch. This is uh, cruel embroidery. But a kit would have the fabric and the floss or the yarns. Perfect. Okay. Now, let me give you a little hint. Uh, when you see this type of thing, this is a cross-stitch uh, pattern with charms. It doesn't have the floss. It doesn't have the pattern. I mean, it doesn't have the fabric, but it has the embellishments to make that stocking. So what I say is I don't use the word partial kit or anything. I say pattern with charms. Because um, you don't want people to say, well, where's the fabric? If you use the word kit, people think they're getting the fabric and the floss. So, so that right there never had floss or, or um, uh, a cloth. You know, the, no. Uh, no, this was called a, this was a line that Dimensions came out with called charts and charms. So it's a chart. It's basically it's just the chart and the charms. You got to get your own floss. You got to get your own uh, 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 fabric. Fabric, right? Yeah, and there's a lot of people that collect uh, DMC floss or Anchor floss, the two brands that are the major floss, and they carry them and they make 500 colors or so of each color and they have them stored in the little bins that we see people show in cost quite a bit. They'll go, hey, I found all these. They store them by number and then each pattern excuse me, will open up and it will say the color numbers of what DMC colors you, um, you know, that you stitch it with. And so that's why a lot of people don't like kits. Kits come with a fabric they may not like. It may come with an off brand of like JP Coats or another brand and they want to make sure they're getting the good quality. So that's why a lot of people don't like kits. If someone wants to stitch on linen and it comes with, you know, Ada, which is a bigger squares, you know, they spent all this money for this kit when they're going to go change it anyway. Remember those um, those England cottage, English cottages that I got that was all done on linen? I'm, yes. guess, I'm guessing that the, the lady that did those uh, that she probably switched out and went to linen because she liked using linen better. Exactly, and I, that's all I stitch on. I won't stitch on anything but linen. In and, fact, and I don't do I don't do much as far as buying and selling cross stitch, although I should be. But um, you know, it was about a, a year or so ago. I found a Craigslist ad, and Cindy remembers. I sent her pictures, and she says go buy it. And I went and bought it, and I spent a hundred dollars on uh, everything that she had. Uh, it was all com the, all the cross stitch was completed and uh, framed, and there was some other stuff, you know, a couple lamps and a couple books, and I spent a hundred dollars and I ended up selling it all for about a thousand. So, <laughs> and this was completed. There was a couple pillows in there that was completed. There was, in fact, the first item that sold, uh, if you remember, Cindy, it was that oval framed. Uh, oh, it was the roses and stuff, and. Uh, I, I don't know if I saw a picture of it, and I sold that for $175. So the first item I sold, I was in the green, and that went yeah. to Alaska. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. And in fact, one of your pieces is the banner for our cross stitch buy and sell cross stitch group. Yeah, that's the uh, EMS uh, pillows. Yeah, the for the yeah, yeah EMS Alan Mauer Stroer, one of the designers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, we had we had another uh, question here. Uh, Ooh, hold on, let me find it, let me find it. Oh, uh, about young people. Are young people doing cross-stitch or, or, or a different kind of needlepoint? Or are young people getting into it at all? Or, or are we looking still at our generation for, for the cross-stitchers? And, and the no, we're, uh, in the last three years, I've really, really noticed. Now, one thing to keep in mind, behind, behind eBay, we don't know who these people are in most cases. But from the Facebook group, I can tell who these people are. I can go look at their Facebook or they get talking to me. And um, I'm seeing younger and younger people. I'm seeing 20-year-olds. I know that Stephanie Abernathy's daughters are really, uh, daughter Chris Kirsten is really into neat, uh, you know, sewing and, and that kind of stuff. And so we're starting to see a Lauren, lot younger crowd. I think it's Lauren that's into the sewing. sewing. Oh, is that Lauren? That's, no, it's Chris. Lauren. 
It's curious. No, no, Lauren makes Lauren makes uh, all the clothes, and she made oh. the outfit when they went to Comic Con, and yeah. Here, I thought it was Kirsten. Look at me. I don't even know. But um, but the thing is, is yeah, we're seeing younger and younger, and we're also seeing people with disposable income, um, people that have you know, um, like we're seeing people that are have are having hobbies. They're having time for hobbies, so they're people without kids, some people without kids, you know, yuppies as the old term. We're starting to see a lot of that more. And are you seeing a more of a turn to Facebook then for this type of product then too then I guess, huh? Yeah, and I think the interesting thing is, is yeah, you're always going to have them on Etsy and Amazon, I mean uh, eBay, but I think there's a real pers more personable relationship on Facebook, yeah. and they love my story. I've made a lot of friends with a lot of them. I accept their friendships. They they always make comments about my dogs, and and you know, and I think they realize that they're dealing with a person. They're dealing with a person that sells this stuff from her <laughs> dining room. You know. Yeah. You can kind of give you can kind of give them that personal service they they can't really get anywhere else. Yeah, and we no always, barrier. Yeah, and we've always said, I've had a number of them say, well, the stitch count is this, and I want two inches on each side. And I said, no, 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 you want more than two inches because you want to frame it. And if you've only got two inches, you can't wrap that. Oh, boy, you know this. Yeah, I'm a stitcher. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not just a store that's selling the stuff on eBay that they don't know. I'm a stitcher. I stitch. I, I do it. You yes. Know? Yeah, they're getting a product, and they're getting some education out of it. That's great. Yeah. That's awesome. But, yeah. So um, I encourage people to, you know, to have, this is something I want to say, no matter what your niche is, like, okay, say for example, uh, you know, Jason sells clothing and all of that, and he buys all of his clothing new, um, but if you're into something you like, my philosophy in life is buy low, sell high, sell what you love. I love cross-stitch, so that's what I'm going to sell. But I'm also going to sell needlepoint, I'm going to sell rubber stamps, I'm going to sell anything that's in that genre. But I'm also going to sell coffee cups because I know I can make a lot of money on coffee yep. cups. I'm going to sell stuff that you know I know I'm going to make money on. Now, when I go to a thrift store, I walk by thousands of dollars worth of stuff each day because I don't know what it is and I don't. I haven't taken the time to to study it. I recommend study something new each week. If you're selling something and it doesn't make a lot of money, and I'll remember Jason. Remember sitting across from you at dinner in Las Vegas. And you were blown away that I was making money selling <laughs> yeah. T-shirts. Yes. <laughs> T-shirts and coffee cups. And I'm showing him on my phone. I'm showing him. I'm going, look what I just sold. Wow, look what I just sold. And Jason's going, this isn't real. I was floored by that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the thing is, is, so I tell people, if your stuff is not selling, think of something else. And also, be ready for these, be ready for these opportunities. And I had one of our cost members the other night, Gail, contacted me and she said, Cindy, this was a Craigslist ad. Can you look at it and tell me? It's a lot of money. And it was, it was, it was $1,500. And when you don't know that market, I'm looking at the photos and I'm going, you write her back right now. When can you get there? <laughs> now this is 11 at night, you know. And she, I mean, it was 11 o'clock at night and she messaged her and the lady messaged her back and she was there the next day buying the stuff and she's been listing it on my Facebook group and it's selling. And she's got uh, an opportunity there, Facebook, eBay, she's got a huge opportunity there. Yes. Anytime you buy a large haul like that, it's, it's exciting, isn't it? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> I, I have to tell you, I was so jealous and I told her, I said, I want... I want that and that and that and that when you get it. Well, those were the things that didn't come with it. They were they were partially finished items. They were items that were partially finished and I thought the lady was getting rid of everything, but she wasn't. Those were projects she was working on. But now, I was going to finish them and say I did them. <laughs> now you did another uh, haul about two years ago with uh, Paul Forty. I did. They contacted me and um, uh, from St. George, which is about five hours from me, and I flew down with my son, and we rented a truck and came back and, and got everything. It was a woman, kind of a funny story. Um, they called me on Tuesday because uh, the guy had answered Paul's ad that they were buying cross-stitch and needlework stuff, and they, uh, uh, they called me on Tuesday. I flew down on Wednesday. My son and I flew back on uh, a Friday night spent the night at the Four Seas, which they were wonderful hosts, 
and then Saturday we loaded up and headed out. Well, my son, as we're closing up the last of the truck, he leaned over to the older gentleman and said, I'm so sorry, sir, about your wife. How long ago did she pass away? She passed away on Monday. <laughs> and we were there on Saturday, you know. And, and I told, I, so I've been telling my husband, if something happens to me, do not sell this <laughs> stuff. <laughs> <laughs> for a cheap price. Do not sell this stuff at a cheap price. You know, I said, there's, there's value in this. And he sees it. He, you know, he's the one that came to me and said, you know, with Prairie Schooler going out, you've had consistent, consistent sales over the years. He used to help me with shipping, and he was always pulling Prairie Schoolers. Every day he sold Prairie Schoolers. So he knew when they were announced they were going out that that was important that we invest in that. Yeah, it's paying more than CDs. It sounds like this day and age. Yeah, I, um, you may, you know, I'm trying to watch the chat, and I got like 22 things going on right here, right now. And you may have touched on this earlier, and if you did, I apologize. But uh, I did want to bring it up on the drive home from Missouri, right? On the drive home, uh, did you sell enough to pay for the whole haul? The whole haul was completely paid for. By the time we pulled into the driveway, a day and a half late, or two nights, we spent two nights. And so was that mostly in the Facebook buy sell groups? It was all. Uh, it was all of it, but three hundred and fifty dollars I sold on eBay in those two days. I okay. had some. Yeah, but everything are you, else. Are you cross posting anything between uh, Facebook and eBay, or are you? Keep, it's too hard to keep up with yeah. getting it listed and then delisting it if it sells in one spot to the other. Okay, I've made the big mistake, and I was telling Michelle Kubo about this today on the phone. I made the mistake of someone asking me if I had an item. I went down to my shop. We have a big shop behind our house, and when that gets all organized, I'll give you guys a tour of it. But I went down, pulled the item, sold it to the lady, forgot to pull it off of eBay, and a week later it sold. And I had to do a, I don't have it. Yeah. And so... I couldn't pull off. I couldn't pull anything that was listed on eBay and sell it on the group without ending it right then. Because it's happened to me not once. It's happened to me a number of times. So I will not cross post because the stuff on the Facebook group sells really fast. One thing I do want to point out: yeah, the Facebook group has my name on it. We did that for reputation because I've been in the business for 33 years. It's got Stitchery Express on it, my business name. But any of you, any of you are welcome to come and sell. Janice Tobin's done well. Uh, Gail's doing really well. Lane sold some stuff last night. Um, Stephanie's done incredibly well with some British magazines. That's something we'll get into um, down the road. Uh, British cross-stitch magazines are killer, and they sell really well for um, U.S. So if you're traveling, buy British magazines. Um, oh. So you won't send anybody packing if they start selling too much in your group? Not at all. Not at all. I encourage it. I believe the competition is, I, I, it's not a competition for me. It's, it's for anybody that wants to sell. Yeah, I get a lot of sales and I've done incredible. I've been very, very blessed since I opened the room at the end of December. I cannot tell you how much I've sold. It's, it's, I, I can't tell you. It's been incredible. And it's one of the reasons I was able to take um, my take the the boys on a trip, my husband and my uh, thirteen year old son on a trip this year, because it's been that incredible. So if you have a niche item, think of buy and sell groups. I know Charlie sells baseball cards on a Facebook group. I know others have sold even clothes. It's incredible where Facebook is. Don't forget eBay, but I don't. I wouldn't recommend cross-posting. But our group, you come in, the key word we're going to tell you, and this is what a lot of people don't understand, you want to make albums. And the reason why you want to make albums, and this is in the cross-stitch group, a little different with the handmade group, and I'll explain that in a minute. Cross-stitch group, make an album of, of types. So if you have samplers, make an album with samplers and then put your name on it. Um, make an album of Christmas. Make an album of animals. The reason why you don't want to post them on the timeline is they'll fall down the timeline. Albums people go to and they look at them. It'll say, you know, photos, albums. And you can go through everybody's albums and go, oh, I want that. Oh, I want that. I want that. Timeline is sold, 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 sold. And yours is going to fall down, you know, so fast and so quick. Handmade group, we did a little different thing. We allowed the sale of the item 
because you're going to sell one item at a time in the handmade group and you want to spotlight that handmade item. So that's why we've allowed that. And I have sold four items on the handmade group for cool. more more than I would have gotten on eBay. Cool. I'm going to ask if anybody else has any more questions. Uh, it's a, I'm figuring that we should run maybe about ten more minutes here. If there's anything that you want to touch on, Jason, you know, with Cindy, um, please have at it. And you know what? I don't know how many people are watching us tonight, but I want to thank everybody. And Jason has been stellar and asking me all the time, Cindy, we need to do this. And and you know what? I'm up for it. Now that my life has settled down with Thomas's hand surgery, my 13-year-old son, for those that don't know, had reconstructive hand surgery. He's on the road to mending, but it, you know that's that's taken up a lot of my time. And I would love to do this with David and Jason. You know, as, as whenever you guys want. Thank cool. you, Cindy. Very cool. Yeah, we we we've been promising and promising to start doing more of these, and uh, life is just so busy that it sometimes it's it's hard. And I know that every time I talk to Cindy, she's just filling orders and filling orders. And <laughs> the Facebook groups have been killing her, and uh, we're actually all taking uh, taking a week. Well, not all of us, but Cindy and I are we're going away for uh, a week. Uh, to visit Carolyn in uh, Baltimore, and then from Baltimore we're uh, going to San Jose for eBay 20, and we're going to run into a lot of people that we know and uh, love there too. Aren't you leaving tomorrow, Cindy? Aren't you going somewhere tomorrow? No, tomorrow I'm spending the day with my old band, Shenandoah. Um, they're coming to town, so I'm spending the day with them in the evening, and then I leave Friday. Was that the one from? Is that were they from Nashville? When you used to work in Nashville? Yeah, yeah. Hey, cool. Yeah, so That'd I'm pretty fun. excited. I'm pretty excited. The drummer called me tonight, and he goes, I haven't seen you in, like, how long? I said, we don't want to talk about how long it's been. <laughs> you know? I have a question for you. Um, somebody was asking about listing on the iPad or the iPhone, and, and I know that you do eBay on, the, uh, on your iPhone. I know that you're exclusively mobile when you list uh, on eBay. How about in the uh, Facebook group? So you're using mobile hey. or using computer? This is huge. This is huge, and I want to tell this to you guys. Make your album on your computer. Just go in, and so what you do is you go into the group, and it'll say it'll take you to photos, and then it'll say create an album. Make your title, and I I make a little title that says you know Prairie School or Cindy Sorley with a piece of you know I I print it on a little label and print it up there you know or put your first picture up. Then your album is created, and then you go into the iPhone. You go into the iPhone, and from the iPhone, you go into the group, and I'll just show you guys this real quick. This is pretty smooth. If you and I know you can do this because the girl that works for me has. Um, so what you do is, if you're on the iPhone, you go into the group and you go over here to More, and it'll say View Group Info, and then it'll say Photos. You go to the Photos, and then up at the top, it'll say Albums. And then you go through the albums and you scroll through which album you want to add to. So I, wow. I put a whole bunch into this album the other night. I put 35 patterns in that night before last. I have two left. But wow. it'll say right here, add photos, photo, photo. Or you can just, I could go take pictures of all these prairie schoolers, lay them out, take a photo, lay them out, take a photo, lay them out. Then it'll say add photos. You pick 30 photos. I think it'll do 30 at a time. And then you can go in and do it. Now, Gail, brilliant Gail, she posts a little, a little uh, price on her. So she's got like a little price tag on the top of her patterns. So, wow. she, so say she listed this Prairie Schooler book, she'll have a like a, a stick it note that says six dollars or nine dollars right on it. She doesn't have to put any detail what it is. You're going by the pictures. I have to do it a little differently because a lot of the patterns I'm listing, I might have 12 of the same pattern or nine of the pattern. Or I say, I have one, but I can order more. So not only am I having order stuff in stock, I'm ordering for people. Yeah, that's right. So I've already got pre-sales. So that so, you could you could list 30 patterns in what? Less than five minutes, I'm guessing? Oh, With that? <laughs> and in a minute and a half. That's sick. <laughs> a minute and a half. Well, and you and you have a great advantage over a lot of people when when you look at or hold up a pattern or or, or a kit, 
you look at it and you already know how much you can charge for it without doing research. Not exactly. all of us are in that same boat. Exactly. Exactly. And, and that's that just something from that... years and years and from owning your own store and you and keeping up with it and that's your specialty and so you just know. Yeah, and that's the thing is is that's where I know that market. I know that market in my head. I know the value of it. I know what companies are current. I know who were good designers, who's who design who people are looking for. You know, uh, like this kit right here. You know, this is a Herald Angels stocking kit from a gold collection. Not all gold collection sells, but I know that this kit right here is a hundred dollars. And uh, did I put all of them on eBay? No, I put I'm the only one on eBay with it, so I want it to look like there's only one available. So I listed a hundred dollars it sold. So then I listed another one instead of listing two because people get into the mentality of, oh, she's got two, I'll just wait and get it, you yeah. know. And yeah. so with different things, though, with current patterns, I'll list 12 or 15 at a time and, and sell. I mean, I've got a pattern right now that I ordered 36 of and I've sold them so fast, I can't keep it in stock. So I called the designer and I said, I need 48 more. And she's like, okay. And I sold, I sold three of them today. But the thing is, is it's because I know that market. So I know Charlie. Charlie knows toys, and he's an expert on those kind of things. Russ Fisher knows games and game pieces and, and that kind of thing. And, and, and that's another thing, David, you were saying, you know, if people sell too much stuff, are you going to be upset? No, Russ Fisher lives right by me. We shop at the same store. And we're always going, hey, what did you find? Hey, what did you find? I have meetups. I take these people thrifting. You know what? My philosophy in life, if I didn't get it, it wasn't meant to be. So if you get a great hoard, now I'm a little jealous of Gail. Sorry to say. <laughs> I was. And then she she said to me in the text, so what would Cindy do? Are you saying this is a no-brainer? Yeah, for me it was a no-brainer. But you don't know. You don't right. know. So ask me. Ask me and I'll say, yes, ask her if she has this. Ask her if she has this. And so that's something to really keep in mind. I am available whether you PM me or ask in cost. I, I'm so busy in the Facebook groups. I'm sorry for having to fill these orders. I try to get into cost when I can. And But tag me. Carolyn's wonderful and David's wonderful about tagging me. I try to get in there three or four times a day, but sometimes really, guys, today, and I did not go to bed until 3 o'clock this morning. I was filling orders for the Facebook group. That's awesome. So, so another thing that Cindy does that anybody with a uh, niche should be doing is they should always be keeping up on what other people are selling stuff for. So I know that Cindy is in eBay and she sees the, the type of prices. You know, she's in the sold section all the time seeing what stuff is selling for. So she keeps up with the trend. And if you're selling, I'm sure you do the same thing, Jason. You keep up with what, you know, the spring collection is going for and uh, you know what's selling? Our belt selling? Our, our, you know, what accessories? What, uh, uh, what kind of dress? You know, style of dress or style of jeans? I know that uh, that's important. If you have a niche, you need to know what what the market is currently bringing for those types of items. And one thing I will tell you is, um, if you don't, if you have Christmas kits, now may be too late. These things sell all year long. They start selling the minute Christmas ends because they have to stitch these and it may take them a year. It may take them six months. Um, I sell Christmas stockings every week, at least two or three a week right now and they've been selling now since January. Something to keep in mind, put your Christmas stuff up all year if it's needlework. It takes a long time to do. Lauren wants to know how the uh, toll painting books are doing in the other group. You know what, uh, to be honest with you, I have not sold a lot of the toll painting books because I haven't had time to list them, but I have over a thousand of them that I just acquired. A friend of mine quit selling on eBay and he gave me all of his books, so I will be listing there soon. I haven't followed the market really well to know what's um, selling, but one thing to do is go into a category search. This is huge. Category search, decorative toll painting, don't type in the word toll painting in a search because um, a lot of people don't use the word toll and they may not use the word painting. Do it as a search, decorative, art, pattern books, highest sold first and you'll get an idea of what designers 
are selling for the most. Pull those out, get those sold on eBay, they'll likely go international, sell the rest of them in the Facebook group. And I promise as soon as I get back from San Jose, I will be adding stuff to every one of the groups. I listed a whole bunch of plastic canvas books for two or three dollars a piece. They all sold to one lady in Texas. She bought every one of them. Oh, cool. Very cool. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm available. I may not get to you right away, but I am happy to help. I've, I've got a lot of people that ask me. I'm, I'm very approachable. Please know that. Uh, Cindy's Cindy is the most social butterfly that I think I've ever known in my life. <laughs> Cindy will talk to and make friends with anybody, anywhere, anytime. Yeah. And she'll, and, and, and she'll make you feel like you've known her for years. <laughs> for meeting her for one time. Her, her, her best friend after uh, eBay, uh, I think it was after uh, eBay Radio in uh, uh, 2014, uh, was she met Coolio on the plane, and now they talk all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't know who he was, you know. I, I'm like, uh, you want me to help you sell anybody? I don't, uh, what, uh, what's your name so I can look up if your stuff sells? Mm -hmm. I had no clue. Everybody around me on the airplane's going, oh, my gosh. But, but my 13-year-old my hates to go out with me because he says, I'm overly social. Mom, you're being excessively social. You're overly social, so um, that's been kind of a kind of a thing with him. But I think he realizes that's just how I am. So, but I'm I'm available. Please remember that. Jeremy asked a question. I think. He's oh no. <laughs> Troublemakers only, as always. But uh, he wants to know. This is like a a, a three part question for the one question. How would you go about selling on Facebook? List on your own business page. Facebook ads. Or start a group for your niche? Start a group for your niche. I've got a business group, a business page for Stitchery Express. I put stuff on it all the time. I've not sold one thing in how many years? Ten years. Uh, uh, what was the other one? Facebook page? Business page? What was right. the other one? Yeah. I, um, I highly recommend getting a niche. Uh, Jeremy? I would be getting a sports memorabilia page, memorabilia page and put your name on it, and I would be and, and allow other sellers to come in and sell because that's where you're going to get your buy and sell people. People that sell also buy. Cool. Okay, let's start thinking about wrapping this up. Any? Okay. Uh, Jer uh, Jason. I don't have any more questions. Congratulations, Cindy. That's an awesome haul, and you deserve it. I think it's great. Yeah, and you know what? I, I encourage everybody to you know to, to just have a backup uh, of money somehow. You know, I have this line of credit on my business checking account. Um, you know, just in case these opportunities come. We had a we had a lady that had an opportunity to pick up a whole bunch of cross stitch kits, and she didn't have the money, and we were all dying because you know it was it wasn't there. So if you're going to be in the business, you've got to look at it as a business, and you've got to have that kind of funding. Yeah, and find a way to get it while it's there because it won't last long. Exactly. So uh, yeah, these are once in a month. You know, these decisions have to be made. You know, someone, uh, <laughs> I bought some Legos the other day. Now I am not into Legos, but I showed the pictures to Charlie, and he's like, "Go, go." And so. Yeah. Um, one thing that I, um, you know, I, I bought them. I'll end up tearing them apart, selling them, but I may give that to my little boy to do. Well, my little boy who's six foot two now. But anyway, um, I want to thank everybody in cost. I want to thank everybody in thrifting with the boys that joined us tonight. But I have to tell you, I have to uh, thank everybody. My admins in my cost group are incredible. Stephanie, uh, Carolyn, David. Um, Gloria, but I call her, it's actually Gladys, but I call her Gloria. I don't know why I call her Gloria, but I call her Gloria all the time. Love her. If you guys ever need a store review, I highly recommend hiring her. I will endorse her with everything I've got. She's incredible. She's an expert on SEO. Um, I also recommend buying David's um, carpet cleaner. i got to tell you a funny story really quickly. I know we need to wrap up. We had a bird that moved into our light in our um, porch, had all of his birds and the 
poop was everywhere. And I tried scrubbing it up with Dawn. I tried everything. I used David's carpet details clean as a whistle. So it was amazing. So, but I want to thank, you know, I'm scared I'm missing somebody. Stephanie, you know, oh my gosh. And my admins and my Facebook group, Jeanette Burnett, Janice, Lane. Thank you guys. I could not do it without you. I mean, I really couldn't. Um, and, you know, if you enjoy this, please uh, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel here. And um, some of my uh, videos, instructional videos, are a little crude. <laughs> but but they have good information in them, and I'm getting better at making them. Uh, so uh, yeah, like like my Facebook page, like and subscribe, hit the thumbs up on this uh, on this uh, presentation if you like it, and uh, and that's it for me. Yeah, and we will do these more if you guys really like them. Um, we'll make a point to do this with the three of us. If you guys don't, you know, if you love us, let us know. And we're working, and we're working on getting uh, Brian Goodman from Thrifting with the Boys, and uh, Thrift Hunters, uh, in here in one of these. He'll be in it. He'll be in it sometime in September after eBay Radio for sure. Okay, cool. You mean eBay Twenty? Oh God, eBay Twenty. Sorry. eBay events. Yeah, eBay events. Too many of them. So please, thank you guys, everybody in cost. Um, I, you know, thank you. I cannot thank you enough. Thank you. Thank you and David for both having me on tonight. I really appreciate it, and I love hearing your story. And I'm so jealous you are going to the to the big party. You all have a great time and be safe. Get on the plane and come be with us. <laughs> <laughs> or come, or come, or, or, or come up to Maryland with us this week. You get me in trouble, Cindy. That's what my mother lost. She goes, "You went to the burlesque." I said, "Well, Cindy sort of gave me the tickets." <laughs> I know. <laughs> Yeah, that was pretty funny. We had a good time. That was a lot of fun. It was fun. I, I don't know how I. You know what? I acquired those free tickets for being social. I I got, how many people in that show? I must have got forty people in that show for free. It's, so. it's, it's true. We were checking in, and we were in the diamond room or whatever, and <laughs> talking to the lady, and she give the lady there behind the counter gives her a few tickets for Jubilee, and she says, "Well, you know, I've got this amount of people," and she says, "Well, here, I'll give you a few more," and she says, "Wait a minute, but we have." We have this many more coming, and he gave, a whole, gave her a whole stack of tickets. We were giving them out to people on the casino floor. Yeah. We were overwhelmed by that. That was crazy. That was a great, great time. Yeah. Thank you all so much for accepting me and my wife into the community. We appreciate that. Well, I think the world of you, and I love doing this show with the three of us. I think this is awesome. Cool. All right. So Thank until you. next time. Good night, y'all. Thank you, night. Uh, Cindy and Jason, and uh, we'll see everybody later. And this will be recorded. Night. Bye.